The Porsche 991 GT2 RS has set new production car lap records at pretty much every circuit it has been to. It has proved itself beyond all doubt a supremely fast and fun track day toy. Which is precisely why I am not going to drive it at a track. I mean, fun though that would be, what more could I really hope to tell you? Instead, what I really want to know is what is this road car actually like on the road? So we've come to a road, a wonderful testing piece of road, far, far away from anyone else. absolutely nothing it just seems to pick you up and take you down the road <laughs> the way the power delivery comes in is so linear it's totally different to the previous gt2 rs and the sound of it it's a really cool sound i hadn't expected that it sounds a bit like a sort of almost like a big bassy naturally aspirated 911 somehow, totally different to 3RS, but really, really cool. It reminds me a little bit of a GT1. Amazingly, this serious production car actually has 25% more power and torque than that homologation special of the late 90s, with the GT2 RS's 3.8 litre flat six putting out 690 brake horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 553 pounds foot of torque from 2,500 RPM. Although it's worth mentioning that the modern car is nearly 400 kilos heavier. Knots to 62 miles an hour, 2.8 seconds. Top speed, 211 miles an hour, or six miles an hour more than the GT1 race cars ever achieved down the Malsan straight. In terms of setup, it is basically the same as the GT3 RS, but with slightly firmer suspension to cope with the extra 40 kilos of weight. Same rose jointing at the back, same rear wheel steer, same size wheels and tyres, yet for all their similarities, the two cars are somehow more different in character than I imagined they would be. One of the first things you notice about this car is just, well, it's, it's a host of, of details, things like this, this paddle here, this little carbon paddle, which definitely has a, a different throw to it compared to the ones I'm used to with PDK boxes. And then you get things like the sounds. So you've got less sound deadening in the rear there. You can hear the rear brakes so much more, but other things as well. If um, put the handbrake on, so much louder. Even better thing, this is sports exhaust. Oftentimes when you, you press the button, it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference, sort of, at least not straight away. This, It's amazing, all the resonances that come through the car. Oh, very different. <laughs> Actually, when you're going along at sort of relatively low speeds, you sometimes get this sort of boomy sound almost, like a light aircraft or something. It is pretty fidgety. It's, it's one of those cars like, I suppose, like a race car. It gets better the faster you go. It just wants to go quickly. Road is so testing, seriously. If the GT2 RS can deal with this, it can deal with anything. <laughs> and the GT2 RS certainly had to deal with all conditions. The very idea of driving this car in the rain might seem enough to give you sleepless nights and cold sweats, but while Cup 2 rubber, let alone the new optional Cup Rs, means standing water has to be treated with more than a little respect, it shouldn't be left in the garage just because it's a bit soggy underfoot. Talking of garages. I thought I'd park up here partly because it says no parking and I'm just a rebel and partly to catch my breath and partly to look at some of the details on this GT2 RS, principally the Visac pack, which will cost you an extra 10% or £21,000 on top of a standard GT2 RS. Now, 
The big thing, I suppose, is the aesthetics initially, or at least that's what you notice straight away, because the carbon parts, which come as part of the GT2 RS, are now exposed, like this rear wing, the intakes here, the roof, the bonnet. But more pertinently, you also get these lovely magnesium alloy wheels. Now, they save 11 kilos over the standard ones. I just want to take a moment there for the clearance, because it still blows my mind. I know it was there on the first generation of GT3 RS with these 21 inch wheels, but how they cram those into the arches and still make it ride, I, it, the mind boggles, frankly. Moving forwards, the other big part is in here. It's this beautiful titanium roll cage, which saves around 12 kilos. The Vice Act pack overall saves you about 30 kilos. There's also some stitching, just to remind you, you spent that 21,000 pounds. We pop the carbon bonnet in the front, taking up a bit of the luggage space. There's a tank, a bit like a BMW M4 GTS for distilled water for the water injection system. I love the overall stance and track refugee vibe of the GT2 RS. Like its naturally aspirated brother, I reckon you could slap a livery on it and no one would bat an eyelid if you parked it up on a grid at Silverstone during a race weekend. There are actually some prominent stylistic differences between the 3 and the 2, with this car having a much bluffer front and a less fussy rear. Overall it looks, well, slightly more cohesive actually, slightly better to my eyes. This colour, if you're interested, is Miami Blue, paint code M5C. I love a Larry coloured GT car, but I think I would go for black if it were mine, to blend in with the exposed carbon. I would say to give it a subtle, stealthy look, but a bit like a ninja with an unfurled umbrella and a megaphone, I'm not sure that wing and those exhausts could ever be stealthy. But as much as the Vice Act pack shouts on this Miami blue with all the stripes, where it really makes a difference is out on a road like this particularly with those magnesium wheels, saving 11 kilos in unsprung weight makes a huge difference. Yes, this road probably is really a bit too bumpy for the GC2 RS, but I love the fact that it just telegraphs all the camps and bumps so well, and yet, although it's firm, it does seem to deal with them. It rides much better than I'd expected, to be honest. This is just such an exciting car. It demands all of your concentration, but it's so with you, even when it picks up wheels or takes off over the bigger bumps. It's still with you, you still know where it is. Just as it was at slow speeds, this direct steering, this brilliant front end, means you can really, really drive it hard. Wow. And then out of the corners, having 700 horsepower at your disposal, seemingly no lag at all, just means you can get on the power and you've got so much acceleration. You can see the little traction control light flickering away at times, but more just because it's over the bumps than because of any deficiency in actual traction. One thing you might find yourself wondering, and in a way, I suppose I kind of did too, is do you really need 700 horsepower? Well, kind of no, but then it's a bit like having a big house, I imagine, where, fair enough, you might spend 90% of your time really living in the kitchen, but when you do throw a massive house party and get everyone in, open the whole thing up, yeah, then it's quite nice. Even when the turbos are too much for the rear axle, the GT2 RS doesn't hang you out to dry. It somehow leaves you feeling in contact and in control when it's sliding. Don't get me wrong, this is not a cuddly cat of a companion. But concentrate, listen to what it's telling you, dial your reactions all the way up to caffeine level 11, and it'll probably only scare you occasionally. So the big question is, this or GT3 RS? Do you know for me, for the first time, I think I'd pick this. The way it's, it's definitely firmer than GT3 RS because it weighs a bit more. The power delivery is addictive, but for me it's that sound because that's perhaps the biggest reason you think for choosing 
the 3 RS is that naturally aspirated motor, but this sounds so good, but so different as well. And the having all that torque and power is just addictive. I love this car <laughs> way more than I thought I would. Certainly in the UK, it is on the cusp of what is acceptable as a road car in terms of stiffness. But to me, that is part of the challenge and the thrill. It's part of the hardcore character that makes the 2RS different to other 911s. To be honest, it might be too much out here, were it not for the fact that this engine is so stunningly linear that it makes 700 boosted brake horsepower more usable than it has any right to be. It's not as though Porsche has reduced the heart-thumping height of the tightrope you're walking, it's just made the rope a little bit wider. On my own personal Porsche GT car wish list, a three-pedal GT3 still sits at the top, but this GT2 RS slots in just behind it. If you want the biggest 911 adrenaline hit out there, this is it.